All right, it is the anniversary of September 11th today. Everyone has their story, well, everyone who's old enough has their story about where they were, what they were doing. I know I've told you this before, but I just thought it would be appropriate to just take a minute and tell you where I was. I was in the Marines already, a very young Marine. I'd been in for about a year. I wasn't one of those super patriots who joined afterward. And we'd gotten up that morning, we went and did PT, uh, exercise, it's Marine Corps. So we went on this long run and all kinds of things. And we had just finished this long run and we were in front of our barracks. And we were just doing some stretching, things like that. And they told us, hey, get up to your room now and turn on the TV. Not exactly a normal order you get, go watch television. Okay, something big must be going on. So we all scampered up to the barracks. We're all sweaty, covered in sand and everything else. And we open up the door and we get into our barracks rooms. And there was like 10, 15 of us piled in one room. The guys were piled into different rooms. We turn on the television and, and one of the towers had been hit. And remember, we had been out PTing. So we, we were all confused. My first thought, and this was on, it was the main thought in the room was, did some drunk fly a plane in the tower on accident? How would some, how do you hit a tower on accident? We, 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 didn't, we didn't know, we just had no idea. But we're watching, we're watching, we're watching. And this is all live, I, th I think it was CNN. And we watched live as a second plane hit the second tower. And now obviously we know, we're not stupid, we know this is an attack on the country. And, and we're mad, we're mad, but it wasn't white hot anger yet. It wasn't, man, these dirtballs, who do they think they are? And we're still watching. And then the towers came down. And everybody watching, every Marine in the room knew what that meant. We knew how many people had just lost their lives, how many innocent civilians had lost their lives. And I'm not a big crier. It's, uh, it's not who I am. I just don't not build that way. But I had tears of rage pouring down my face that day. And I will tell you, I was not alone in that room. We all wanted to go kill somebody. Just me being very honest, we were all ready to go kill everybody. Really, that's, that's how we felt about the day. And... I recently had a chance to uh, go to New York City and see the 9-11 Memorial Museum. If you're ever in New York City, do it. There, there are some things that I just feel like every American should do if you get the chance. Do it. Go, go walk through that and remember. It's, it's a day you should always remember. It's a day I'll never forget. All right? That's all. I just I wanted to share my story talk to Sean Parnell, his story and everything about that in just a moment. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. I remember it. I remember it all. It's one of those things, if you're of a certain age, you remember it. Remember where you were. You remember what, what happened afterwards. Joining me now, my friend, host of Battleground Live, which I would highly recommend you watch, Sean Parnell, also a combat veteran. Okay, Sean, my story, I've, I've already told it. Everyone knows mine on this show. September 11th, where were you? What were you doing? The floor is yours. Tell us about it. I was a sophomore in college at a small university in Western Pennsylvania. We had just had a big party the night before. And at that party, Jesse, I had had a conversation with my buddies about how our generation never really had a an inflection point or a, 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 a moment that defined who we were. And then I remember waking up on this rundown college couch the next day and, uh, you know, blinked my eyes open and the world was spinning, had the hangover of a lifetime and all around me were Iron City beer cans and crushed cigarette butts. And I remember staggering over to the television set and turning it on and watching it flicker to life just in time to see an airplane crash into the World Trade Center. And in that moment, just like anybody else who lived through 9-11, I feel like I was shaken to my core. I was I was angry. Um, I was also afraid. I watched people tumble from those towers and land on the sidewalk on live television, watch people stumble out of that wreckage, 
you know, covered in thick gray soot. Only thing you could see were bloodshot eyes and a thousand yard stare. Um, I think what affected me the most that day, Jesse, and what inspired me to eventually join the military was how our first responders responded. And that was instead of running away from the flames, I watched one first responder after the next run headlong into them. And as you know, and as the American people know, anyone who lived through that day knows many of those first responders who stormed into the flames that day and ran up those steps to try to save people that they'd never met before in an act of selflessness that I'd never witnessed in my lifetime up until that very moment. Many of those people never emerged from those flames again. And Jesse, I was a kid back then, didn't have good grades, was probably drinking too much, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And so I figured I'd join the military, get in the fight, and take the fight to the enemy. You weren't alone in that. And, and I mean, the, you, you post September 11th guys who joined. I was in for about a year before it happened, but it was such a wave of patriotism. Patriotic young men stepping up and just, look, doing something about it. Uh, how much of that do we still have, Sean? I know those guys still exist. I'm not naive. I'm not going to say those guys are extinct. We don't have any of those anymore. That's not true. There's all kinds of pipe hitters who are in there now and, and guys who might join one day who can and will do it. But do we have as much as we did before? You know, Jesse, I'm not sure. I think it's, it's I, you're right. An entire generation rose up to serve this country in the wake of September 11th. And had their lives, the trajectory of their lives altered forever in a way they probably didn't anticipate. I have no doubt that young men and women in this country have that selflessness and, and the metal that's necessary to rise up in a moment like that. But I would be lying to you if I told you that I, that, that, I mean, our country is just fundamentally different today. And, you know, it's been 23 years. It feels like you know, the focus of our military is, is lacking. We're not, I mean, obviously we're in the midst of a grave recruiting crisis. Again, I'm not saying that that selflessness isn't out there, that patriotism isn't out there. It is, it just feels like it might be hibernating a little bit. And I shudder to think what would happen in this country if God forbid a, another attack on the scale of September 11th happened. I, I'd be, you know, with five kids, my friend, it worries me for sure. Yeah, I think about it all the time. I have a 16-year-old and a 15-year-old, and they're obviously about that age. And and look, I, let's let's just be frank about it. I, you and I have talked about this privately. We're friends, but I, I don't I don't feel like the people who led this country. I don't feel like they necessarily did right by all those patriotic young men who stepped up to fight. And I I, I feel like this next generation being raised by those men. They might view things a little bit differently. You get what I'm saying? I do. And and Jesse, you know, 23 years after 9-11, you'd think it would get a little easier hearing some of the sound bites that you just played or hearing the voicemails that people left their loved ones on that plane. Oh. It affects me more today than I think it did when I was young. And it's hard to yeah. even talk about. And I remember driving to drop my son off, who is 11, because I've got a 17-year-old, a 15-year-old, two 13-year-olds, and an 11-year-old. So I'm driving the 11-year-old to drop him off at the at the bus stop today and listening to, you know, some morning show on the radio. And 9-11 sound bites started playing, just like a compilation of them. And my son, you could just see in his young 11-year-old eyes that he was just in just totally engaged by what he was hearing. And he looks at me with these wide eyes. He's like, dad, you lived through this, right? I'm like, I did live through this. And I could feel because they were playing the, the voicemails of those women calling their husbands, telling them that they love them, that they love their kids, that they're probably never going to see them again. And it, it hits right here. And 23 years later, it still is emotionally resonant to me. And I think particularly so for a point that you just made, my friend, is that now I know with the benefit of hindsight of how this country treated the men and women who served both in Iraq and Afghanistan over 20 years of war. My battalion specialized in Afghanistan. We 
we deployed, we came back. We deployed, we came back. We deployed, we came back. And what do we have to show for it? What do we have to show for, for the war in Iraq? 20 years of fighting. I'm 43 years old, so half of my adult life, all I've known in, in my adult life is war. I've had 30 friends die. And I got to add, being completely honest, what was it for? You know, can you honestly look in, in the camera today? And, and I'm not asking you this, Jesse, but I'm just saying to anybody out there that's listening or watching, say that that this country is better off or the Middle East is safer for what we did in Iraq and what we did in Afghanistan. It, what we did in Iraq created a void in Iraq, gave rise to ISIS It emboldened Iran. Look at what happened with the Afghan surrender. We left American citizens behind. We abandoned our allies. We deposed autocrats in Egypt, in, 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 in Libya. We tried to do it in Syria. And for what? Thousands of Americans' lives lost, tens of thousands injured, wounded, hundreds of thousands with the invisible wounds of war, you know, blood and treasure that we'll never get back, trillions of dollars spent. It's just really frustrating. So, and I think that's part of the reason why looking back at 9 11 today, it just, it, it hasn't, it's still very, very emotionally resonant to me, only maybe in a little bit of a different, more complicated way. Yeah, I don't. I actually don't think you could possibly explain my exact feeling on the feelings on this any any better than you just did. I actually just had a reunion with Marine brothers of mine I was in Iraq with, and every single one of them to a man pretty much echoed exactly what you just said. And that is, uh, that's, that's heavy. And it's sad to me that the people who led this country, Democrat and Republican, and the military leaders, They'll never own and they'll never be held to account for what they did with our patriotism. And, and it, it bothers me to this day. Sean, my brother, I love you. Always will you come back anytime. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is. And I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.